The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time on Friday morning. We come into the opening bell in 24 minutes. And right now you've got markets pretty mixed. Yesterday, S&Ps charge higher for most of the day, starting at about 1030. We finish right at session highs of above 4000. We pull back overnight, but as we come into the opening bell, you're inching towards those levels right now. The S&P only negative by four points, down one-tenth percent, trading at 39.97. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 43 points. Now, next week is the week we get all the big tech stocks, folks. We get Apple and Amazon on Thursday. We got Microsoft and Google on Tuesday. Ahead of that, we got some tough Snapchat numbers last night. Snapchat down about 30% this morning. Why not? Let's jump over to it right now. You're seeing many companies relying on digital ad spend, and it goes even lower than that, man. Whew. So what are you down? You're down $6 right now from where you were initially to 17.10. You're down $6. You're down almost 40% from the spike high. You are down $5.30. Yeah, and that's more than 30%. You're talking about 33, 34%. Snapchat going to be down. Now, check out Snapchat, folks. It's been a dismal earnings event. Look at that. They did catch a pop in January. Uh, but this all started with an earnings event back nine months ago in October. And just like that, you go from 80 bucks, and you are going to be at a – is that going to be an all-time low? No, we got down to 4 bucks. Uh, but you're going to be back down to 11, 11 bucks. What do we get to in the depths of COVID? 789. You're going to open it at about 11 bucks for Snapchat. Uh, they had some pretty dismal earnings as well as Twitter. Also some pretty dismal earnings. Be interesting to see how that shakes into the conversation with Mr. Elon Musk. Twitter down only about 70 cents, though, 2% compared to about 30 for Snapchat. We jump around to commodities. Bitcoin back near 24,000, 23,705 for Bitcoin right now. Crude. $95.38 gold contract catching a slight bid. Check that acceleration out. Yesterday, we got a surprise hike to 50 basis points. Somewhat of a surprise. It was almost a 50-50. Whether they were going to go 25 or 50 was what the market was looking for. They go 50. Is that Wednesday? Uh, yesterday? Yes I, uh, yes, I believe so. Yes, it was. And to pull up the euro US dollar for some context... And you can see, folks, I don't normally go through the euro US dollar, but in this environment, it's very important. I've been plugging it all week, and I'll continue to plug it through the month of July especially. Come on over to the front page of TFNN. Check out the Tiger Forex report by our man Teddy Kegstat. Through the month of July, you can lock in 25% savings for the life of your subscription. The only time we do this type of sale, folks, is when we kick off any product as an inaugural charter member. You become an inaugural charter member, and you can still cancel. So lock in the price. Get it for a month. Look at the action in the euro. You get a spike higher on the news that they go 50 basis points. And just like that, we're basically sitting at 102 right now, right where we were. You did have the euro actually weaker early this morning on that number. We're right back to basically where you were. Jumping around to the yen. The yen, 136.72 off of the highs of 139 and change. A little bit of, finally, maybe a slight reprieve. That giving gold a little bit of a lift this morning. You got the yen down 64 pennies to 136.70. Uh, keeping in mind, though, man, we are just off some relative highs of 139. Uh, no real dramatic weakness yet in that yen. But you know what I'm going to do, folks? I'm going to check out the Tiger Forex report on Monday and see what our man Teddy Cakes that has to say about that entire Forex market. All right, back to the short term time frame charts. We finish it up with notes and bonds. How about some lower price and higher yield, man? You get the 10-year. Look at this acceleration just from yesterday. Absolutely remarkable in terms of the moves that we have going on in the note and bond market. You are talking about up 25 ticks from the close of the session, but you're talking about up more than two full points to 119.22 from 117.45. 
pretty remarkable in a big way. And what does that put in terms of bonds? 2.8%. Absolutely remarkable that we are back down to 2.8% just that quick in that market. All right, let's jump around to some of the action we have this morning. And where are we? It's going to kick it off with Snapchat numbers, but where did that one go? Okay, I'll have to find that one. We'll pull it up after the break. Uh, but nonetheless, let's jump over to Snapchat this morning, down to about 11.05. I thought I had that story. That's what I was going to kick it off with. Well, let's jump to Twitter because we're going to cover them as well because this one's going to get a lot of highlights as well. They miss earnings expectations, and they're blaming part of the revenue drop on Elon Musk takeover bid. The whole world's talking about it, folks. Of course, it's going to contribute to their business in some degree, right? Probably where that lies, no one will be sure, but they blame their revenue miss on ad industry headwinds and uncertainty tied to the pending acquisition of the company. They lost eight cents versus expected earnings of 14 cents. They take in 1.18 billion versus 1.32. Some mammoth miss when you look at the percentage of money. I mean, we're used to companies like Amazon taking in $100 billion, right? That would be like a company that's expected to take in $132 billion and they take in 118 and they miss by $14 billion in the quarter. That's what it would be like almost next, next week when we get some of the big dogs out there. Monetizable daily active users, probably the most important metric on an ongoing basis growth-wise, 237.8 million, just under the 238 that the market was looking for. Revenue slid 1% year over year to 1.18 billion, representing, uh, they yeah, so they revenue decreases, and Wall Street was looking for 10.5% growth year over year. They have decreasing revenue right now. I don't know. I mean, maybe this is part of the reason why Elon had buyer's remorse and he doesn't want to buy it. My guess is is he's in for a tough case, man, in Delaware. From everything I keep reading, they're not messing around. And just the fact that the judge went to an expedited hearing means that they would agree, being the judge, that the details of what need to be discussed are somewhat simple. And that's not good for Elon. If the simplicity of the disagreement comes down to something that can be settled in less than a week. We'll see how that plays out, but I would not be touching that one. You're just straight out gambling, man. If you know where that thing's going to end, he could just be fined. I'm not sure it makes sense to force him to buy the company. What would that do, right? As shareholders, do you really want Elon holding that company right now if he doesn't even want to have it? I don't think I would. How does that even play out? But a president has been set, and they can force you to buy it. But again, I don't you know. You're supposed to do what's best for the shareholders. And if I was a Twitter shareholder, and I am not a Twitter shareholder in any of my accounts, folks, I don't think I would want Elon in charge of that company if he doesn't want to be in charge of that company for $44 billion. You're forcing him to buy it for $44 billion. You put him in there? I don't know. I don't think that's the recipe for success for those shareholders. The market right now continuing to climb. We get the NASDAQ only negative by 28. The S&P is about to go flat. We're back above 4,000 today. And we got the Dow up 114 points right now, 32,122. We jump over to Twitter, clawing back some of those losses. Twitter shares only negative by about 60 cents. Pretty remarkable. They miss on revenue like that, and they're only negative by 60 cents. Snapchat didn't even give an outlook, though. We'll talk about that when we get back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps barely in the red right now. You're trading right at 4,000 as we come into Friday trading. NASDAQ barely in the red by about 30 points. The Dow catching a bid. Dow's up 118 right now, 32,125. We jump back to some of the earnings that we have this morning. Before we jump into Verizon, I did want to talk about Snapchat real quick in terms of their numbers and what they came out with. So revenue, they slightly beat, uh, miss, slightly miss Snapchat, 1.11 billion versus 1.14. Global daily active users, 347 million versus 344. A loss of two cents versus an expected loss of one cent. Not that far off, right? When you look at just those three metrics alone, they lost a little bit more. They took in a little bit less money. Maybe that resulted in that extra penny of a loss. But they had three million daily active users more than the market was looking for at 344. Okay. Revenue so far in the period is approximately flat from a year earlier. Analysts were expecting sales growth of 18% for the third quarter. There's a big part of it, folks, okay? Slowdown happening right now in the quarter we're in. That's a wake up. That's why you're seeing some of these stocks get hit so hard. We are not satisfied with the results we are delivering regardless of the current headwinds, they said. They're not blaming it on the current headwinds. I think they're doing a worse job than even the market right now in terms of what you're talking about. Uh, and they did not give any guidance. Now, they, they announced a stock repurchase program of up to $500 million. They do have cash to be able to do that with. Um, they, they revealed a new desktop app shortly after it debuted its Snapchat Plus paid subscription. I don't think that's going to be the future of this company, folks. So they peaked at $136 billion in September. Now the company's worth about $20 billion, well off those highs. But yeah, I was going to get the phrase that they are not giving it any guidance. But nonetheless, yeah, here we go. In its investor letter, Snap said it's not providing guidance for the third quarter because forward-looking visibility, visibility remains incredibly challenging. Um, and that's where they said the revenue was flat. 
So they got some serious problems going on the quarter they're in right now. And they're going to bring down some of the other companies with them. You jump around to Meta. Meta shares down about 10 bucks on that news from 184 to 173. Twitter, as I mentioned, they had their own numbers, but Twitter still is slightly in the red. Some like companies like Pinterest is trading lower. There's your Pinterest reaction. Even a company like Roku, digital advertising. You see the drop off last night after the bell on those Snapchat numbers. Roku drops from 97 to 94. Uh, Roku, I think they got their numbers next week. When are they coming out? They were also out Thursday. Apple, Amazon, it's a big week next week, among many others. Roku out with their numbers on Thursday. And uh, yeah, Amazon. It's been quite a run for Amazon recently. Yes, Thursday the 28th as well. Apple the 28th as well. And then, as I mentioned, Microsoft, two of the head one, big ones on Tuesday. Microsoft out with their numbers. And Google, yes, the 26th, which is Tuesday. All right, jumping around, what else I pulled off? Verizon out with their numbers this morning. Cuts the full-year forecast. They're trading lower by about 5% this morning after the company released the second quarter report. Cut the full-year forecast. In its updated guidance, Verizon said it now expects wireless service revenue to increase 8.5 to 9.5 percent. That's down from thinking 9 to 10 percent for the full year. Service and other revenue now expected to be down 1 percent to flat. Full year adjusted earnings, 510 to 525. The market was looking for 540 to 555. So they're just trimming it a little bit across the board. EBITDA to be down 1 percent, 1.5 percent to flat. Uh and they were previous looking for a growth of two to three. That's probably a big one, man. You don't want to see your EBITDA going down as opposed to a growth forecast of two to three percent. For the, the three months ended June 30th, 33.79 billion. Relatively flat from a year ago. Market was looking for about 33.75. So revenue's pretty much in line, earnings pretty much in line. The forecast gets a trim. And man, you pay for it with a company like Verizon. There's your drop off from 47.66. You're down about two dollars right now on that equity, so just more than four percent right now to 45.75. You had been trading lower already because AT&T had their numbers coming out when early Thursday. Yeah, so you had Verizon down yesterday with AT&T trading down pretty dramatically. That was quite a haul when you talk about 2050 down to below 19. Uh, what's that? Six, seven, eight percent pullback, almost a ten percent pullback at the lows there of eighteen twenty-four in the open yesterday for AT and T. They lost some of it back, but AT and T, Verizon, uh, higher cost, lower growth. That's going to hurt their game, and both of those stocks are showing it. And uh, yeah, all right, jumping around. What else? What do we have pulled up? We talked about Twitter. We talked about Verizon. Talk a little bit of Elon Musk, Snapchat. Yeah, this one's worth uh, talking about briefly, at least. So Germany, they agreed to bail out energy giant Uniper as Russia squeezes gas supplier. You're talking about $15 billion, man. Germany on Friday agreed to bail out Uniper with a 15 billion euro, which guess what? That's basically 15 billion U.S. dollars because they're almost at parity now. As the embattled energy company becomes the first major casualty of Russia's natural gas squeeze, the bailout package is going to see Germany take a 30% equity stake in the company. Now, initially, the company shares rose, and then they were trading 21% lower an hour later. It's all going to be in the details, right? What happens to that 30%? Does the government get X control, etc.? But yeah, you're going to see this happen, man. And I was looking for one phrase in here in particular. Yeah, so Uniper was the first energy company in Germany to sound the alarm over soaring energy bills. It submitted a bailout application to the government support earlier this week, month. As the Germany's biggest importer of gas, it's been hit hard by vastly reduced flows via pipelines from Russia, which have sent prices soaring. So they have to deliver the gas, right? Uh, you have much less gas coming in from Russia. You have the gas prices spiking. They have to deliver it. Um, so, yeah, they have a, quote, unquote, comprehensive stabilization package to provide it with financial relief. One of the things you can't let happen, folks, is you cannot let the energy companies go PK and then the people have no energy. That's the reason why you need some regulations in certain areas like that. We regulate electric companies 
and so forth. Um, the front month gas price at the Dutch TTF hub, a European benchmark for natural gas, around 5% higher Friday. Prices were up more than 60, 650% over the last year. And there's Uniper shares year to date as they're getting pummeled right from, you know, that's that's lots going on over there. All right, let's jump to a little crypt crypto as we got about five minutes to go until the opening bell. My dad was talking about this one yesterday. Uh, is this it? Yes, it is. There it is. Ex Coinbase manager arrested in U.S. crypto insider trading case. Criminal charges follow probe launched in April by the SDNY SEC. Also sues, sues former employer and two others over conduct. I mean, greed will get you, folks. And I'm sure these guys and girls thought that they were playing in an area of ambiguity. And they thought that they were playing in an area probably that they could have enough secretive nature of their transactions through crypto that they wouldn't get caught. But you're seeing over and over, man, that crypto, if you're doing bad things, there's enough of a history in crypto for the feds or whoever it be to follow your, your traces as well. Uh, maybe not for the most brilliant out there. You might be able to hide something, but it seems like no matter what you're doing, the feds can get those numbers. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but this was a Coinbase employee and he was well up the chain there leaking public in information. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
And just like that, folks, markets are open, and we open actually and get above yesterday's closing price level. S&Ps right now, you're up by four points. You get the Dow up 163, American Express trading higher. They're putting a lift into those Dow numbers, I'm sure. We'll jump over to American Express with some strong numbers in a moment. NASDAQ 100, barely in the red by 35 points. The Russell, positive by one. Let's jump over to AXP. Strong numbers indeed, up almost 6% to 159.06. You jump to Snapchat. 32.66% is the move that they have down for Snapchat. Watch out on that one, folks. They're a big mess right now. They can't figure out anything going on, and they're not going to give you any guidance going forward. And they're telling you that this quarter is going to be a bad one. That's not a place for optimism and for a rebound. 32%, though, that's quite a haircut overnight. You jump to Twitter shares. They're only down by 1%. You jump to some of the other social media companies or maybe digital advertising companies. Pinterest makes a lot of money off digital ads. They're down 8.2%. Roku catches a lift. Can't hold Roku down off 2.5% for Roku right now. They were trading below 94 in the open, 94.75. Roku's got their earnings next week along with many others. Let's see how ARC is doing this morning. It's been quite a week for ARC. They're only down about 9 tenths percent, giving back some of it. Zoom's had quite a lift this week. They give back a little of those numbers. Teladoc. Jumping through some of the companies that she's heavily into. And how about Tesla? Tesla shares continuing to rise up 2%, we'll call it up. Yeah, it's going to be 2% by the time I finish talking. $831, there it is, 2% for Tesla. Strong numbers for Tesla Wednesday after the bell. Pretty remarkable. You're up $90 since then. Let's jump to Amazon. They've had quite a week continuing that as it's basically flat at $124.69 for Amazon shares. Okay. Uh, American Express, real quick. Their numbers coming in. They beat on the top and bottom line. Uh, card members registered record spending driven by a rebound in travel and entertainment, right? Travel and entertainment. Jump to some of those travel stocks. They had some tough earnings, man. American, before the bell yesterday, they're catching a little lift today, up by about six tenths percent. Talks about Carnival. They had a billion dollar stock offering Wednesday after the bell. <sighs> Pretty remarkable. Norwegian up about 1.2. Let's jump. Delta catching a little bit of a lift up 1.3. JetBlue has been a mess lately. JetBlue up about 7 tenths percent. We jumped to some of the chip, chip stocks that have gotten a lot of attention this week. Kind of just hanging out at that price level they were at yesterday. NVIDIA giving back 1.3 percent. Man, a week ago you were trading at about 155. You're trading at 180 right now for NVIDIA. AMD is up at 90 after entering the week at about $80, ending last week at about 80. 77.90 was the print last week for AMD shares. See how Taiwan Semiconductor is trading with all the talk of our $50 billion chip bailout. Look at these chip stocks, man. There's Taiwan Semi. was up to 145 earlier this year. You're down to 87. NVIDIA ended last year near 300. You're trading at one. 87. I remember the talk on NVIDIA, man. NVIDIA in particular, a lot of analysts were out there talking about the multiples on NVIDIA, man. You'd have to go out X amount of years, and it was just getting silly at these price levels of 346. And nonetheless, you trade down more than 50% from that price level, and you're sitting right at the 618, which is interesting, right, in terms of where you pull back from the entire COVID run for NVIDIA, from 48 to 346, back to about 178. Jump over to DHI. DH Horton, they had their numbers, I think, yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday morning, some strong numbers. My dad was talking about this on his program as well. Uh, and he was talking about back in 2006, 2007, that these builders got quite a bounce during the, slow, the slowing process of the real estate market before things really fell apart. Maybe that's what you get this time as well. Now, taking a look on a longer term time frame, right? I'm going to go all the way back and zoom in on the decline they had. I think this is probably the pop he was talking about here. We had DHI had a double top at about 40. These are 2005 and 2006 highs, right? You come down to 20, you get cut in half. But just like that, man, you got a 50% plus run to the upside from August of 2006 to February of 2007. And then things really just fell apart. And you got to 10 bucks by the end of 2007. You did catch another bounce there. And then you got to about $5 under that price level, 379. Is that the low? Let's back it out. Let's see what the actual low is. 379 was the low. You chopped around and things really started to accelerate in about 2011 when you were trading at about $8. 
Now, zooming in on this again, because I love some Fibonacci numbers, all right, I said to myself, well, what kind of a retracement did you get in some of these home builders? I'm going to zoom in on the 2006, okay? Because in these in particular, if we do get some big bounces, folks, which is definitely possible because the housing market is so weird right now, okay? So at that time, you got about a 50% bounce in D.H. Horton of the trend lower before things basically ran another A to B, C to D. Now, look where it went, okay? You were at about a, about a price level of 40, just over that level to about a price level of 20. That's a 20-point A to B leg, okay? And then what happened next? You, you pop 50%, you got up to 30, and then what happens? It runs C to D, it does a $20 C to D leg, and where does it peg? Exactly at 10, all right? A to B, C to D, 2005, 2006, the builders, there's your pop by about 50%, okay? Now, we're gonna look at the current level of this as well. You jump over to Lennar, I already got some charting on this one, okay? Because I was checking this one out as well. Same thing, Lennar, you got a double top. 2005, beginning of 2006, Lennar's up at about $65. You trade down to 40, and then what happens? It gets all the way back up to above 55 before it goes to five. These were the bounces he was talking about. It's very important to understand how history can repeat, folks. I think is it our man Dave White that says it doesn't repeat, it rhymes. There are cycles. Pay attention to this. Now, this one, where does it go to? It goes right to the 618, folks, of the move lower. And uh, this goes well beyond a 1 to 1 A to B, C to D, because this one only had, we we'll call it what, 66 to about 40, a 26 point leg. That should have taken you down to about 30 A to B, C to D. So maybe it does a 1 to 1.618 extension. Uh, nonetheless, Lennar, they get punished in a big way, but you can see. So pay attention to these housing stocks, man. My dad was talking about it. He's making some great points. When I went back and I looked at the bounces just these two stocks had during the housing crisis, and I was not in housing at that time, folks. I was renting. I was 25 years old. Um, at a time, you think you're missing out, right? You're renting. You know you're just kind of lighting money on fire as opposed to owning a house, paying for equity, uh, realizing some of that growth in the price of the home. But I didn't miss out on much because, you know, I was coming into that as an area of 2005 or so and ended up buying a place in about 2011, 2012. Very fortunate how things ended up coming down where the market was at that time, especially being in Florida, helped by some wind at my back in a state where people are moving to, especially during the pandemic. But keep that in mind, and I love the fact that they went to some Fibonacci levels, folks. So 50%, the 618, the 382, the 50, and the 618. That's the meat of it. Maybe you just scale into trades during that area from the 382 to the 618. You get above that level, maybe you think you're wrong, right? Um, it turns around slightly before you get to the 618. At least you have some skin in the action. But when we get back, we're going to take a look at some of these bounces, because this is what I already started charting, okay? So Lennar... You got a 382 bounce going on already from the pullback that it had from 117 to 65. The 50 percent's at 90, the 618's at 96. We'll take a look at DH Horton if we get back to some other stocks as well. Stay tuned, folks. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets catching a little bit of a lift. The Dow up 142 right now. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red, but only by about 11 points. And the S&Ps, we're at 4,009 right now. And the S&Ps, you're trading up by seven points. That's about two tenths percent. Jumping back to the home builders. So we were talking about the type of bounce that we got back in the 2005, 2006, and the bounces that we're getting right now. Now you take a look at D.H. Horton, okay? Now, I'm going to take this Fibonacci off here because that's the one that relates all the way back. And this is the one we're talking about. You almost have a double top here. Pretty close, right? You saw the double tops that we had in 2005, 2006 as well. You get one top in May of 2021. You get a top just above that price level towards the end of that year, seven months later at 110. You sell off. We're coming right into the 382 of D.H. Horton, okay? We are coming right in to, let me back this off as well, the 382 of Lennar. Lennar had almost a triple top. You make 110, you make 110 again in August, and you climb up to 117 before things, the wheels really fall off and you dive lower. Now, we got bounces that were 50% and even 618 back in 2005, 2006. So if you're looking for a short for some of these home builders, I mean, we're in the meat of it right here that these stocks are getting into the 382 of the bounce. Right, you got an area that I'd look for a short on Lennar right where we are right now, up to about $96.60. You trade higher than that, maybe you're going and that's going to be your double top up to 117. Maybe we haven't double topped yet if you got above the 618. Uh, and D.H. Horton, you can do this with others as well, folks. This is just the ones I was looking at, uh, really, because D.H. Horton had their numbers this week. And my dad on his show was talking about the top end and the bounce that these things had before the wheels really fell off in 2006. This is not the same housing market, okay? But boy, we, we got some headwinds, man. When you talk about housing prices that are elevated, probably deserve to pull back a little bit. I mean, as a homeowner, folks, I'd be elated, even in Florida, with where prices are right now, if they just held steady for a couple years before going up, right? Even if inflation's raging, if you just hold where they are, my house went up like 30% last year after going up some X amount percentage the year before, right? The rises, you have $400,000 houses going to $700,000 in like two or three years in Florida. It's a staggering level of wealth accumulation. When you think about it as well, let's say a $400,000 house, right? What do you put down? Even if you put down 20%, which a lot of people don't these days, okay, and you don't have to, let's just say you put down 20% and you put down 80 grand. That $400,000 house in one year goes up $120,000. You've made back your entire down payment plus 50% on that number, 
right? Um, yeah, and I don't know if I see them dropping in half, Duffy. I don't see them probably dropping in half. I don't. You know, if you live in a house right now, what are you going to do, right? Number one, I don't want to sell because I got a 3.5% mortgage locked in, something like that, okay? I'm just ballparking people, right? People are not going to want to sell mortgages that are at 3%. You know, we get up to 8% interest rates. That's going to put a hampering on this market. We were just at 63 for the 30-year mortgage to put things in context, and the market's still functioning. We were just at a 6.3% mortgage for a weekly basis. Market pretty much didn't skip a beat. Yes, you could say it skipped a beat, okay? But in the context of that high of an interest rate, we have rental prices soaring at record rates. Rental prices soaring at records. That is going to contribute in dramatic fashion. There are so many different variables that were not a part of 2006, 2007. I can definitely see a pullback because, as I said, I'd be elated. I think many people would with the rise that you've had in that equity. Nobody could buy. Well, if, if rental prices are skyrocketing, man, that's going to matter, and it's going to allow investors to buy. Maybe you don't need to push out that 30-year mortgage. Rates are going to matter. Rates matter to investors, of course. They're financing those moves. Um, but you got a big problem with rents, man, and, and that is going to be a huge impact. And think about this, too. Rents, as long as rents are going up, okay, and if no one's buying a house, where are they going to live? They have to rent, okay? So if the if the housing market gets that bad, where are all these people going to live? Because they don't have houses, right? Well, the shelter cost of the CPI is one-third of the CPI, shelter cost. Interest rates can't start coming down until the CPI comes down, and... While interest rates are going up, that could cause rental prices to stay high because nobody wants to buy a house, which would then keep CPI high, which would in turn keep pressure on the Fed to keep rates high. It's quite a cycle, man. We're going to see how it plays out. Nonetheless, uh, home builders, positive today. There's an acceleration on D.H. Horton on the open following yesterday's acceleration. You're up $10 just from where you were yesterday. That doesn't sound like a housing market falling apart, man, when you got D.H. Horton trading up from $69 yesterday to $79 today. You jump over to Lennar, they go from 78 to 85 basically on the D.H. Horton numbers from yesterday, probably. Not sure what's happening today in terms of the lift you're getting. Let's jump around to some of the stocks that have their numbers. Yeah, Snapchat, Max Payne, man, even more, down 35%. As I said, there is no hope for this company today or tomorrow folks they are in big trouble this quarter okay you want to you want to try and find a low on that company you could definitely make a case for it it's happened before this thing got down to five bucks before it ran up to 83 right got down to 482 for a while before the run really started but they're losing a lot of money i mean at some point they got 350 million eyeballs it would make sense that that company is worth something with 350 million eyeballs but not right now i would not be stepping in the way of that company at all twitter basically flat after some pretty dismal numbers for Twitter at 39.53. You jump over to Amazon. They're slightly in the green today, up by a quarter percent. Let's see how some of those stocks that were trading lower. Pinterest down 8.1%, we'll call it. Meta down 4.9%. When does Facebook come out with their numbers? Are they next week as well? Oh, they're Wednesday. Okay. So we get, what, Microsoft and Google on Tuesday, Facebook Wednesday, Apple, Amazon, Thursday, many others. Roku on Thursday, I think, as well. Uh, they'll be out with their numbers. Meta on Wednesday of next week. All the big tech stocks, man. S&P up by five. Dow up 82. Let's see how American Express. Maybe they pull back a little bit. American Express, well, decent numbers. Up about 5%. Visa shares, they're flat at 216.16. All right, let's see what else I had pulled up here in terms of equities that are moving. We had Verizon. Let's check Verizon because they had their numbers as well. Verizon was lower. They're down about 5.3%. Tough numbers for Verizon out there. Mattel, they had their numbers. They were lower pre-market. Better than expected quarterly performance. Strong sales of movie-themed toys. However, sales of its American Girl brand slid nearly 20% for the quarter. Not familiar with that brand. Uh, nonetheless, Mattel off about 1.7%. Seagate was higher, man. No, lower, excuse me. 12% in the pre-market. Uh, missed on both the top and bottom lines. Weaker than expected forecast. Demand waves for product like personal computers. Ouch. Yeah, it seems like if you wanted a personal computer, you probably stocked up during the pandemic at some point, right? 
They catch a lift, though. Not as bad as the market may be feared. You're down 6.6% for that company. S&P is catching a lift, man. You're at 4,011. Really interesting to see how today goes, folks. I mean, look at this pop we got going right now. We're above 4,000. You were as low as 36.39. We're approaching 400 points above that price level. What's that, a 10, 11% pop in the S&Ps? But guess what? Next week's the main event, man. How are we going to do when we come into those big earnings events? We're going to find out. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment of the show. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of volatility in both directions to kick things off. Markets trade higher in the open, and then boom, just like that, you give it up pretty quickly. S&Ps right now, you just give up 16 points like nothing, man. You're trading at 4,004, still positive by two points. NASDAQ 100, you're barely in the red by 21 right now. You get the Dow, positive by 79. Health by American Express, up 5% from American Express right now to 157.64. And you have the Russell getting hit right now. Russell down by 13, that's 7 tenths percent. Bitcoin up by 400 bucks. Crude sitting at 96.59. And please, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. You can check out the Tiger Forex report. It's a great time to sign up for it. On the weekend, Teddy's got a new report that comes out every Monday. Use code TEDDY25 and you can lock in 25% savings 
on the monthly subscription for as long as you subscribe. That takes you from 97 bucks down to 72.75 and it still comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. And let's jump to uh, some of the markets that Teddy covers because they're driving a lot of this action, man. Interesting that we get an acceleration and get some Euro strength right now. You have the Euro jump higher on that 50 basis point surprise yesterday. You go all the way back down to 101.4 and just like that, we're actually now above where we were in that price level. And look at the move that we're getting, man. When you look at notes and bonds, it's not stopping right now, okay? You got the 10 year at 120. 120, we were at 117.14 yesterday. That is a move, folks. The 10 year yield, 2.75%, okay? We were at 3.5%. We're back to where we were three and a half months ago on the yield, just like that. That might help this market, folks, as you see a decrease in yield to the tune of, I mean, I got 15 basis points right now just from yesterday's action. Whew. This note and bond market, it is driving huge action, man. The 30-year, two points and 11 ticks. Remarkable. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We have live programming. I appreciate you starting your Friday off with me. Uh, Basil out this week, but he will be back on Monday. We got a replay coming up. After that, we got some live shows, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Friday. Thanks for starting your day off. It's going to be an interesting one. Markets slipping into the red as I end the program. S&P is negative by six. Watch that note and bond market. 2.74%.